Hi, if you've ever tried your hand at cooking, you know how rewarding it can be, as well as how frustrating it can be if it doesn't come out right. Over the years, I've learned a few tricks of the trade that have really helped me along. In this series of videos, I'm going to try to pass some of that along to you, along with a few recipes to help get you started. Okay, let's dig in. I think the first key to success in cooking is planning. You need to know what you're going to do before you get started. Before you put the skillet on the stove, before you turn on that fire, have an idea of what you want to do. If you don't, and your thoughts are jumping back and forth as you're trying to prepare this meal, you might be very disappointed towards the end. So, a little planning, very helpful. At least it has been for me. Maybe it will be for you too. The second key is preparation. Now, this is actually a pretty important one. You know, if you've watched any of these cooking shows, they always have those little bowls in front of them. They all have your ingredients, wet or dry, lined up, measured out, ready to go anytime they need them. That's called preparation. Having everything ready to go when you need it. Imagine if you're cooking your favorite meal and you're right at that critical point when you need that half a cup of chopped onion to be tossed in and you don't have it cut up and ready to go. You're going to stop. You're going to chop the onion. By the time you turn around and get back to it, it's either evaporated all the liquid, it's burnt up, or the meal's entirely ruined. So, do a little preparation. Have everything ready to go before you start cooking. The third key, of course, is execution. You have to actually do the cooking. This is not as hard as it seems, but it's harder than you might think. Cooking to perfection is a matter of experience, period. There is no way to get around it. Practice and experience. That tells you when things are ready to flip, whether you need 30 more seconds in the oven, or whether that steak in the skillet is actually medium rare, or if it's overcooked. So practice. It's the only way you get through this. We learn by doing. Okay. You know, another thing I'd like to just mention are cuisines. There's a lot of cuisines in the world, from Italian to French to Spanish to, to Chinese to Indian. You know, they're, they're all over the place. And they're all good. They're all very good. But they have one common thing that seems to run through them, and that is the protein. There's about six different proteins or categories of proteins that we use. They are beef, pork, chicken, lamb, fish, and shellfish. Learn how to cook those and everything else will just fall into place for you. So you might ask, if that's the case, then why is one cuisine so much different than the other? And the answer to that is the sauce and the spices they use. Depending on the area of the world they come from, those spices can be quite different and they can be quite rich and flavorful and exciting. And that's what makes a difference in the meal. In France, the sauces tend to lean towards the more buttery, creamy side. In Italy, they're going to lean towards the more lighter wine, a little sweeter port side. Makes a very nice sauce, both of those. And in Spain, you're going to find sauces that are earthy and savory. Very delicious. If you want to prepare a certain cuisine for your family, friends, or guests, then you can take them around the world with the same meal just by changing the sauce. Simple and easy to do. Now it does, again, take a little practice and a little knowledge. And lastly, I guess I'd like to mention terminology before I get into the heart of things for you. There may be a few things that I'll say that uh, perhaps need a little explanation if you've not heard them before. One of them is called mise en place. This is a French term and it basically means to have everything ready, the ingredients and the tools ready for the chef before you cook. It's part of the planning and preparation stage. You'll need to put all that together and have everything ready to go. I might also say corn flour. Here we call it corn starch. The rest of the world calls it corn flour. It means exactly the same thing and I have no idea why we call it something different. Well, that's enough of that. Let's get into the heart of it and move on. 